in an answer. I don't want to physically ask a question. Just just wait till the so the agenda. Um, do a brief introduction, uh, then we're going to look at a bit of a, a bit of a history, really, around SharePoint Online, um, where things are now, and, and where things are going uh, from Microsoft's perspective. Look at some of the different deployment options for SharePoint Online, because there are a couple available now. Uh, look at some of the key differences between an on-premise and, an, uh, and a SharePoint Online deployment. Some will be fairly obvious, but we'll talk about why they're, that they're quite important. What the key benefits are um, that people are seeing from a SharePoint online deployment, as opposed to having a SharePoint on-premise solution. Um, considerations and compromises. So there are differences between a SharePoint on-premise and SharePoint online uh, deployment uh, in terms of functionality and in terms of uh, setup. So there, there are there are inherently some compromises that you will have to make. Some of them might not affect you and your organization, but we'll look at what uh, what people, uh, or what we have come across uh, when we've been discussing the, the different options with people. Do a demo uh, then. So I'm not going to demo SharePoint. Um, it's not a, a, a webinar about SharePoint functionality. What I will do in the demo is actually show the, the, admin, the admin interface for SharePoint um, online and also uh, Really, just just look at sort of a blank team site in SharePoint, just to show the the commonality between uh, an on-premise and an online SharePoint solution from an end-user perspective. Uh, it would be interesting to know actually uh, uh, the people that are on the call uh, if uh, uh, if any of you are currently using SharePoint 2013 uh, or previous versions of SharePoint and whether they're online or on-premise. So if you, if you if you've got a minute and you want to, to stick that in the message box, that would be interesting to know. Uh, and then we'll do then we'll do a bit of a Q and A. So if anyone's got any questions, you can ask them uh, over the um, over the microphone uh, at the end, or turn into the box if you prefer. So, in terms of introductions, um, just brief to tell you, I'm, my name is Alex Egger. I'm the Business Productivity Practice Lead. Uh, uh, practice Lead for, for Virtual. So, I actually take responsibility for the team of SharePoint CRM and Business Intelligence, um, but most of what we do at the moment is around is around SharePoint, uh, and we're doing uh, we're we're seeing a transition now from a lot of organisations only really considering uh, on-premise SharePoint solutions and Office 365 uh, to more and more people now actually looking at uh, or certainly weighing up the options uh, and looking to cloud-based solutions such as SharePoint Online, which is reason really why we want to do this webinar to give people uh, an overview of what's available and what what needs to be considered. So. Um, I'll now I'll now progress through the uh, through the slides. So, in terms of the the past, present, and future, just sort of first of all, which was um, really where I, I started really getting to uh, experience and use SharePoint Online was part of the Business Productivity Online Suite uh, that Microsoft released. I think it was probably around about 2010, if not a little bit before, uh, and that, that was the same as Office 365 is now. The idea was it was a, it was a suite of products, uh, SharePoint Online being, being one of them, uh, included an exchange and Office communication server as it was then. Uh, and in the, uh, in, the, in the early BPOS days with SharePoint Online, uh, it, it was fairly limited. You certainly didn't have much parity between an on-premise SharePoint solution and uh, a SharePoint on Online solution. You had the core collaboration. Um, capabilities, uh, calendars, lists, libraries, task lists, things like that. Um, you had some basic site templates, the the, the larger, the, the core sort of uh, the enterprise level uh, site templates weren't there. You did have some auditing and retention options around there if you did have some compliance options, but they were a bit limited. Uh, you, had, you were limited to a single site search as well, so you couldn't Search across your SharePoint content. If it was a, if it spanned multiple site collections, you were really just confined to a single site search. The, the administration was also siloed as well. So you didn't really have a control panel to manage your overall SharePoint environment. You were kind of limited to dealing with site by site uh, administration. There was some limited workflow. Um, you had that you had that box workflow, and you did have some options for tapping in SharePoint and doing some custom workflows with the front page, but but they were very limited, and and there was no business intelligence, so it really was a stripped down version of SharePoint available to people in the cloud, and you know there, there was a decent uptake of it. Um, if you just had those core collaborative requirements, then uh, it was a, it was a good solution for for some organisations. There was kind of a big update to, uh, to to the BPOS suite um, part of the way through uh, its existence uh, and really there was a lot of uh, functionality added to the SharePoint online side of things so 
the enterprise site templates were introduced, so you could have publishing portals, you could start to run intranets properly from uh, from from SharePoint Online. The user profile functionality was added in, so people could uh, could publish information about themselves. The workflow capabilities were increased, so you could use uh, things like SharePoint Designer to to go into the site and, and create some more advanced workflows. SharePoint Workspace uh, came along, so you could actually sync and take offline your SharePoint content and work on it on your desktop or your laptop uh, and have that two-way synchronization. And really, the, that that um, the introduction of that functionality came along with the SharePoint 2010 uh, on-premise as well. So some of these things were coming in on-premise at the same time they were being made available online. A lot of the core document management capabilities were, were sort of equaled um, in the cloud uh, at that point as well. So the version control, um, content types, metadata, a lot of the great functionality that was available in SharePoint premise around document management was introduced uh, through SharePoint Online. Enterprise search was made available, so rather than just being in, uh, limited to searching within your individual site collections, you could now search across all of your content, uh, you know, significant improvement. And sandbox solutions were, were introduced, so you could actually now start to upload, albeit fairly limited, custom components to your SharePoint online uh, environment. They would be limited to individual sites, but you could upload them to the site, activate them, and sort of start to, to add some, some bespoke functionality to your SharePoint online uh, environment. So the BPOS is, is no longer. Uh, the overall suite is now called Office 365. And uh, SharePoint Online specifically, as part of that suite, well, we've got much closer parity now with the actual SharePoint 20, 2013 on-premise solution. Uh, there are some, there are still some core areas of functionality which don't exist, and some of the existing bits of functionality um, can be slightly constrained uh, over and above what you would find uh, in an on-premise solution. But there's much more parity now. You, you know, you're looking at much more of an equal product available in the cloud. There are hybrid scenarios available now as well. Um, these are ever evolving, and Microsoft are working very hard to to make more of these available and make the existing hybrid scenarios a bit slicker. But there are options now for splitting your deployments uh, on premise um, and and in the cloud, and also options for having you, your actual Microsoft sort of exchange in the cloud and SharePoint on premise and vice versa as well. So, so we've got the hybrid uh, situation now, which which can be appealing to uh, to some people. Again, depends on your requirements. We've now got Yammer integration, so as you probably know, Microsoft acquired Yammer probably 18 months ago, maybe two years ago now. Um, so they are now back in Yammer as their social uh, computing platform. With SharePoint Online, um, as long as you're licensed for Yammer as well, we can, we can activate that and just simply switch out the SharePoint social capabilities for Yammer. Um, down below there, the uh, the, th the four, four uh, boxes highlighted at the bottom, these were really um, so, sort of the big, uh, the big features that were released feature recently for SharePoint uh, Online, uh, and these were announced at the the SharePoint conference, which which happened, uh, excuse me, which happened earlier this year. So the first was uh, the introduction of one terabyte site collections. So the ability to have you know really quite a huge content stores uh, for individual sites uh, in SharePoint that had been limited to 250 uh, gigabytes before. So that's a massive increase. Uh, infinite storage scale. So there had been a a limit really of 25 terabytes for any SharePoint Online deployment. Now, for a lot of customers, they, they probably would never even consider getting close to that. For large enterprise customers, uh, we did find that uh, some of them found that a challenge, especially if they're using SharePoint for a lot of document management. So Microsoft have got rid of that now, and there is basically an infinite infinite level you can get to with your, your storage. It does come with implications. We'll talk about that later. Infinite storage isn't free. And once you get over your allocated amount, you, do, you know, that can start to rack up when you get to very high volumes. OneDrive for business. So they, they introduced a Microsoft introduced a new uh, sort of hybrid option, which is the ability to have your personal or my site content um, hosted by Microsoft in the cloud uh, and keep the rest of your SharePoint content on premise. Um, they also in, uh, in, enhanced the the functionality and the, the sort of look and feel of the OneDrive for Business area. So if you ha if you are going all out SharePoint online, they made some improvements around that as well. Uh, and eDiscovery. So the eDiscovery Center is um, 
the Discovery Center is now uh, available within Office 365. So if, if you do Office 365 rather than just SharePoint Online, you now have the ability to perform e-discovery across, uh, across your Exchange content, your, your email, and your SharePoint content, and place holds on that and, uh, and, and have that held separately for audit purposes in, in a separate um, uh, e-discovery center. SharePoint Online on its own, so if you don't go for the full Office 365 just for SharePoint Online, does still have e-discovery, but you're obviously limited just to SharePoint uh, content, not, not, not your email as well. Um, so that's really where we're at now with SharePoint 2013 Online. <coughs> the key takeaway there, really, uh, of that whole side is that it's the closer parity with SharePoint on-premise. Uh, not quite there yet, but uh, it's certainly where Microsoft tend to get to with, with equal functionality. And probably, I would imagine, uh, that the functionality available in SharePoint Online will overtake SharePoint on-premise, uh, because that's where they, uh, they're placing all their money. The, in, terms of, in terms of the future, uh, or what's coming, uh, the, the one thing I really wanted to talk about that was, uh, I think, uh, or a, a feature called Codename Oslo. Uh, and this again was announced at the, uh, at the SharePoint conference. It's not available yet uh, as part of Office 365 or SharePoint Online, but it is something that will be available uh, this year. And it, it, first of all, it's, it's not specific to SharePoint Online. It is an Office 365 feature. Uh, but it does harness a lot of the content, a lot of the functionality available in SharePoint. Uh, and I'll show you some slides, actual, actual screenshots of it as well. It really, it, 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 was, it was an enhancement on the search functionality, really. That So SharePoint uh, adopted fast search. So suddenly it became, um, <coughs> really, you got an enterprise-leading search solution embedded within your SharePoint environment. Microsoft take a step forward, uh, step forward with that, uh, and try to leverage that so that people don't really have to search anymore uh, for a lot of the content. It can be surfaced to them based on their activity within their Office 365 environment. So the, the key thing there is, is search and discovery. Oslo is all about search and discovery, but but it's inherently different because people aren't having to make to put queries in a box. They're having the information fed to them uh, based on what they do. It, it removes the application silos which can exist uh, around the Microsoft product stack stack in the cloud. So if you're using Exchange, Link, and uh, and SharePoint in the cloud, what this what, what what Oslo does is actually aggregate information and content from across those environments and, and surface them up to you. So you you don't really need to miss uh, anything that's going on, and all the relevant information to you is surfaced up. And it it shows you information that's trending, content that is trending based upon uh, what what you're currently working on, the people that you follow. Uh, the information that interests you based on your profile and, and your activity, uh, and also uh, information uh, based upon, uh, or content based upon uh, what you've been shown. So it, it, it will have the intelligence to understand the meetings you've been to, the people that have been there, and the information that was uh, presented at that meeting. And again, we'll try and feed anything that's related to that up to you. So this is a screenshot of the, uh, of the actual uh, Oslo interface, and you'll see uh, each of these panels is actually presenting some content that's held in Office 365. Uh, a lot of that will be in SharePoint, that's all, a lot of that's document information. But we'll present that up to the users based on what their activity has been and what they have chosen to follow and, and what they have, uh, sorry, the people have chosen to follow within their Office 365 environment. And this is dynamic, again, no, no, users don't have to do anything around this. This is all information that's getting pushed up. It's also then a, uh, an option for users to filter the information. So you'll see here the links at the top there. Uh, I can just choose to see what's been presented to me, what I've been working on, so what, what's been modified by me, what I've liked, anything that somebody's chosen to share with me. They're trending around me as the screen I just showed you. So that's that's the that's the Oslo uh, application working out what it thinks I need to see based on on who I am and what I do. Uh, and also an option there for uh, for seeing what's being viewed by me. So anything I've looked at, I can click on that and it'll, again, it'll show up. So some of this functionality uh, we, we were trying to build, or we do try and build in for customers um, using the, the inbuilt SharePoint search capabilities. So being able to perform nice aggregation on content based on based on the uh, the search capabilities that are already available in SharePoint. And really, what Oslo's going to do is it, it's going to it's going to provide that out of the box and in a nice slick uh, animated way as well. It's all driven by the uh, by the what's called the office graph. <clears throat> so this slide just shows you um, sort of some of the information that the office graph is analysing uh, and using to uh, calculate what you should be shown uh, and what would be relevant to you. 
So like I mentioned, it'll work out what, what, um, what information has been presented to you, who, who reports to you and, and who you, you report to. So looking at the organizational hierarchy to, to see which information might be relevant. It'll look at Yammer, so to see the sort of posts that you've been liking in Yammer, what they've been about and if there's been any content associated with them, who you work with, who your colleagues are, what you've been looking at, so what information you've actually been viewing within the Office 365 environment. Um, and really looking at all that information, like I say, and working out, or performing a calculation, using algorithms to work out what, what you should be shown, what should be surfaced up to you. Uh, so I think it's a, I think it's going to be a massive step forward, um, and it'll be really interesting to see that when that gets released. And like I say, it's not a SharePoint online feature. It does try and pull together all the Office 365 uh, 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 applications and use uh, and leverage those. So um, I, I want to bring it up, even though it's not specifically SharePoint online, because that really is the big, the big feature that's going to be released this year uh, around Office 365 and SharePoint online. So next, we just want to talk about the uh, the deployment options uh, for Office 365 and, and SharePoint Online, and, and you know there are lots of different combinations or variations. So I've kept this just the three options. Uh, I didn't want to go too much detail, but just to give you a flavour, really. So the first is to go for full Office 365. So if you if you have more requirements than your SharePoint, i.e. Exchange and Link, then you can get everything in the cloud. Um, I've, I've pulled out here the the Enterprise E3 uh, plan. Um, and, it, and it's approximately fifteen pounds per user per month. Um, that's that's plus fat. I've just taken these prices off the Microsoft website. They might vary significantly for you based on your organisation, the type of organisation you are. Sorry, um, what your current licence and model is with Microsoft and everything. But I just wanted to to give you a rough feel. So if you go for the Enterprise E3, it's the top plan uh, for Office 365. It gives you Exchange email. It gives you link capabilities for conferencing, for uh, for, for, for messaging, etc. You get full SharePoint Enterprise as part of that. You get the eDiscovery Center. So as I mentioned before, that encompasses your your link conversations, your email, your your SharePoint content, and allows you to uh, to manage all, or manage holes and retentions on that content within a, uh, within an Office 365 eDiscovery Center. You get uh, a full installable. Uh, client version of Office, Office Pro Plus for all of your licensed users. So whilst you can use the Office Web App solution that comes with Office 365 to view documents in the browser, you also get a licensed copy as well uh, to, for people to install on their machines. And it includes Yammer as well. So, so probably worth pointing out here that Yammer, Yammer licensing is not part of SharePoint. So if you if you um, if you license just the SharePoint uh, online components of, of, uh, of Office 365, you won't automatically get Yammer as a separate licensing com component, although it does integrate deeply with SharePoint, and it will you can use it to replace the SharePoint social features, you do have to license it separately. But if you go for the full Office, e, um, Office 365 E3 uh, model, you get everything really. It's really everything bundled in. So in terms of SharePoint Online, so if you just need the SharePoint parts, then uh, there are really th there's two plans available, they're called, just called Plan 1 and Plan 2. Uh, I think there might be other um, other plans available for public sector and for education, but I didn't want to list everything out here. Um, plan one is really SharePoint standard, and it's, it's about two pounds fifty a month uh, plus fat. And plan two uh, is SharePoint Enterprise, um, and that's about four fifty a month plus fat. Again, these prices are off the website, and, and they may vary uh, depending on your organisation, your current licensing model with Microsoft. So. With the uh, SharePoint Online, you do get the majority of the SharePoint on-premise features. Obviously, if you go for Plan 1, you'll only get standard features. If you go for Plan 2, you'll get, you'll get the enterprise features. It includes the workflow and Office Web App uh, functionality as well. So if you're deploying SharePoint on-premise, uh, the workflow, SharePoint, uh, sorry, 2013 workflow and Office Web Apps 2013 are separate installs separate servers they basically uh, you just associate your SharePoint environment with them so with SharePoint online you don't have to license them separately they just come with your SharePoint on online licensing so you can create custom workflows and you can also uh, view your documents within the browser and you can create documents within the browser as well the uh, the four boxes at the bottom I've pulled out there as well these are the these are the, some of the core additions that you get with the plan two. Uh, over and above the plan one, so these are the enterprise features. So, so you get full enterprise search. Uh, the enterprise search is 
not exactly the same as you get uh, on premise, but it does have a lot, uh, a lot of features over and above um, that would that which would be available with plan with the plan one. E discovery. So if you do uh, have compliance requirements, if you are subject to auditing, um, etc., uh, you know certainly public sector and so on, then you will uh, you will get e discovery uh, with SharePoint uh, plan with the plan two for SharePoint Online. Again, allows you to do. Uh, place automatic holds on content, so you do complex searches, specify specific criteria for the content you want to find. You can place holds on that and have that placed in a specialty discovery uh, uh, site. That would just be SharePoint content, though, if you just license for SharePoint Online. It wouldn't include email uh, and link messages. You get Excel Business Intelligence with Plan 2, so that's things like Power Pivot, uh, Power View. Uh, I don't know if, if any of you are already using those uh, capabilities. Uh, it's really the uh, ability to leverage Excel. Uh, uh, I've got the term now. Uh, Excel uh, charts and pivot tables uh, to tap into backend data and present those uh, using Excel, but through a browser. So it's, it's really nice. Uh, it's easy for people to get to grips with. It lets end users do analytics on data that you've, you've provided, uh, and all that's available in SharePoint Enterprise um, or, or the Plan Two. And business connectivity services would be the last thing. So um, the business connectivity, business connectivity services will allow you from SharePoint Online to connect to your line of business applications on premise and use that data within your SharePoint environment, including within the, the Excel business intelligence. Um, you do need to have uh, some on premise components to make that work, but that functionality is available if you've got the, the plan too. And they're, they're the four main areas. So there are other, there are other differences between the two plans, but they're the four main areas you'll be looking at uh, in addition when you go for the for the, for the plan two uh, licensing model. Relatively new, so it's only been around for a few months now really, is, is the OneDrive for Business option. So it's really just a stripped out version of SharePoint Online, uh, you know, very stripped out because it, it's replacing your personal uh, business storage, um, basically your my site. So anybody who's using SharePoint already will probably be familiar with the my site concept. Uh, in SharePoint, you have a personal site, and within that personal site, uh, along with the ability to manage tasks, um, have your profile, etc., you can store documents and content in a document library. What OneDrive for Business does is really offload that document storage component to the cloud. So you can use it in one of two ways. You can either use it as a standalone component. So you might not want any SharePoint functionality at all on your uh, within your organization other than to allow people to use a sort of Dropbox type functionality that you control. Uh, and that's really what OneDrive for Business would do. It would offload your, your personal drive storage into the cloud and allow people to also share information from there, sync con content to their local drive and so on. It's really just a document storage area. Or if you want to go for a hybrid approach, you may want to have you know full enterprise capabilities on premise for SharePoint and simply offload that document storage for personal sites to the cloud, and that's another option as well. Uh, and like I say, you can you can uh, share documents from the OneDrive for Business. So if you have a requirement for people to be able to share with external parties, and it's very difficult to to accommodate that with your on-premise SharePoint deployment. You can either do that from SharePoint Online, so it can get around some uh, some limitations uh, that you may have um, with 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 external sharing on premise. Uh, and certainly, Microsoft market that as a big uh, as a big plus. Obviously, that comes with uh, significant governance considerations. If you tell people that they now have this new area whereby they can share with anybody externally that they want to. Um, you can have people put a lot of content up there you might not want up there, or you might be just using it as a default area rather than using your on-premise um, collaborative environments or file shares. So it, it definitely comes with uh, with, with governance considerations. Um, I think it's a good thing, but um, it needs a bit of thought and a bit of control. You get full Office integration, and you get the use of Office web apps with OneDrive for Business. You can synchronize the. Uh, th there's a client install you can put on your laptop or your or your workstation, which allows you to synchronize documents locally, so you can work on them when you're when you're away or you don't have an internet connection when you're on the train, whatever it might be. You can also manage permissions quite granularly, so it's not just a one size fits all in OneDrive for Business. You get your document storage area. You can choose who can see what. You can set up folders for different people to view and edit different uh, different types of documents. Uh, and really, the, the end user has control of that. Again, governance considerations. You need to make sure that people aren't just building their own little uh, fortresses in the cloud. Um, but 
but it is a good thing again that people can uh, choose how they want to share certain content with different types of people. Um, I think the one thing that I've put in there is, is training again. So uh, I've left that in there because uh, OneDrive for Business, like all the other SharePoint, if you're going to do that, it is going to have to, you are going to have to take on board that as well as the governance that, that surrounds it. You are going to have to think about a bit of training for users as well because it is a different look and feel if they're not using SharePoint. It is a different type of, type of way of working. Uh, so those are the three, like I said, that there are other variations, there are other um, licensing models around SharePoint Online, but those are really the three key ones that I want to pull out. The Office 365, so basically all the Microsoft uh, applications, including SharePoint Online, SharePoint Online on its own, and, and OneDrive for Business. Um, incidentally, if you go for SharePoint Online, you don't need OneDrive for Business because you already get that as part of SharePoint Online. OneDrive for Business is simply just a stripped down version of SharePoint Online that just gives you that personal document storage area. So, key differences between cloud and on-premise. So, these, uh, some of these are quite obvious, um, but I'll, I'll explain why they're relevant. Um, so, if you're going to opt for a cloud-based solution from Microsoft, um, namely SharePoint Online, because they do offer Azure as well. Um, maybe talk about that in a minute, but uh, it's going to be hosted in a Microsoft data center. So the way that that works is that wherever you register your uh, your subscription from, you'll be placed in the, in the nearest data center to there. So for most people, that's going to be Dublin or Amsterdam. They're the two European data centers. But Microsoft do have data centers all over the world. So if you do have a global uh, organization, there is the option to register from a different office and, and therefore get your data located with a different data center. That could be for a number of reasons. Um, it might be for compliance purposes, or it might be that the majority of your users are in this particular area and you want to reduce the latency to get to, to the data that you're storing. It's a shared tenancy. So you don't get your own dedicated SharePoint environment when you go to SharePoint Online. You get a section of a shared SharePoint environment. It's all secure. It's all completely segregated. Um, Microsoft put a lot of time and effort into creating a, a multi-tenancy model around SharePoint. But that shared tenancy does introduce um, the most, of the most of the restrictions that you will find in SharePoint because you've not got a farm, a dedicated SharePoint farm with which you can do anything you like. Um, you can only do things which fall within the, uh, the realms of the shared tenancy. It's internet reliant. Again, that's kind of an obvious one, but um, one of the main considerations around that is if you've got a lot of investment around your wide area network or your local area network and you've, you know, you've got nice, uh, fast connections, if you go to something like SharePoint Online, you need to make sure your internet breakout is, is also going to be performant for you, um, especially if you've got uh, a large distributed organization, um, all of your offices that you won't be able to connect to. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to have, have to have to have huge internet connections, but they're going to have to have something that's, that's sufficient. So that's something that's going to need to be considered. And obviously, if you don't have an internet connection, you're not going to have access to SharePoint online. Or certainly, uh, you won't have access to any of the content that you've not chosen to sync uh, locally. Uh, I've already mentioned the no access to farm wide configuration. So you can't go into central administration like you can with an on-premise solution and make changes to, to uh, any areas which affect the SharePoint farm as a whole. And you can't get to the file system. You can't make changes to the core system files because you're in a shared environment. You authenticate with Azure AD. So you've got a couple of options for authentication with SharePoint Online. First and most uh, basic, I guess, and the simplest is you create uh, what are called cloud identities for all your employees. So for everybody in the organization, you create a SharePoint Online account. You ask people to log in for the first time. Uh, they get a username and a password for SharePoint Online. They click Remember Me, and from then on, unless they, they clear out their cookies from their internet browser, they'll automatically be logged on in the background. But they have a separate um, username and password for SharePoint Online than they do for on-premise. Um, not a massive issue for for um, for some organisations. Like I say, it does remember who you are unless you've cleared out your browser cache. And if you obviously if you log in at a different machine, you're going to have to put your username and password in again. The next option is to uh, to have the directory synchronisation, uh, and what that will do is that will take your um, you, you still have a separate cloud identity, so everybody in your organization still has a separate logon for SharePoint Online, but it will synchronize your password with your 
um, your, so your on-premise password with your SharePoint online identity. So you still have to log in in the same way the first time. If you clear your browser cache, you still have to log in again. It's just that you don't have to remember a separate password because the directory synchronization will always send up your latest version of your password to the cloud. Uh, so again, you need to consider the uh, the additional effort involved in the setup directory synchronization. Uh, you need to consider that against the benefits you're going to get um, with with uh, with just using a simple cloud identity, uh, and really the third and uh, most complex uh, option is full um, Active Directory federation. So you can have your usernames and passwords from premise uh, synchronized with SharePoint Online. So basically, users effectively log on with their same username and password whether they're in SharePoint, whether they're working online. Uh, sorry, on premise or in the cloud. I mean, this is all encrypted. The passwords don't actually go up in their in their normal format. They're encrypted, uh, I think, multiple times before they go up. So it is it is all secure, but it does require some additional infrastructure and and, and some additional work to get that uh, AD ADFS uh, conf configuration set up. One of the one of the main reasons we see with that, uh, one of the main drivers for that, uh, we see isn't necessarily to make it more simple for users to log on. It is actually to add some some governance around the logon because with ADFS you can say that people can only log on from uh, via your 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 Active Directory uh, server or your, your ADFS server which you have locally. So you can stop people logging on from non-work devices um, and and the like. So you can stop external access really from from your SharePoint. You can stop external access uh, to your SharePoint online environment and manage have people logging on lo uh, from, from within the organization. So that, that's one of the drivers we see around that more than actually simplifying the login process for users. Uh, so uh, one of the other key differences uh, between on-premise uh, and the cloud-based solution is it's just the general UI. Uh, so it's, it's slightly different. Um, from an end user perspective, uh, not very different at all, to be honest with you, but it, there are some subtle differences. But the central administration, the administration of SharePoint, it, it is is quite different uh, in SharePoint Online. If you've not used SharePoint before, it's not really an issue because you're not having to change, but it, it'll just take a bit of getting used to if you're used to using the, uh, the on-premise SharePoint uh, central administration. Um, and the other, uh, and the last really difference yeah, difference. Yeah, or I guess a feature really is, is it if you go for the full Office 365 subscription, it, it, you do get an integrated um, experience around the the product set. So from within SharePoint, there will be a link in the in the navigation to take you to Outlook or to Link, uh, and so that you can move quite seamlessly between the different applications within the same window. Whereas obviously, if you're working uh, with an on-premise solution you happen to open different applications up. Um, so again, maybe not a massive uh, factor in, in a decision making as to go for, whether to go for Office 365 or SharePoint Online, but it, you know, it's quite a nice experience for the users. So main benefits, are, uh, this is by no means exhaustive, but this is just based on our experience of talking to customers and, uh, and understanding uh, why they why they really want to, or what they what they see as the benefits for going uh, to SharePoint Online. First one is, is really I guess key. It's Microsoft roadmap. So Microsoft will be investing uh, their development time and effort in SharePoint Online, uh, and and the same for the other product set. To be honest with you, they will be releasing a new version of SharePoint on premise. They have confirmed that. That's that they're not going to take that away, but they will be investing all their new development time and effort really around what's best for SharePoint Online. So it's Microsoft's, it is Microsoft's vision, it's Microsoft's roadmap. So that's one of the reasons that uh, that, that you that, that you would really want to consider that. Uh, reduced infrastructure. So if you're going to set up a SharePoint environment, commonly we'll see people start with uh, a three-tier architecture. This is just for a small environment. So they'll have a, a web server, an application server, and a SQL server. They'll probably want to make that resilient. So you'll need to double up on that. So you have two web servers, two application servers, and two SQL servers. So there, you're looking at, for you know, for a standard sort of deployment, probably six servers. And they'll likely be virtualized these days, but you've got six servers to look after there. If you need high availability uh, in terms of uh, you know data center resiliency, you're gonna have to double up on that because you're gonna have to have a failover data center, uh, a failover farm. So you could be looking at 12 servers to support your SharePoint environment there. 
if you go to SharePoint Online, all of that has gone because you, uh, you know that's all taken care of by Microsoft within their own data center. So you know that's a significant saving. And, and if you're going to have multiple farms in a distributed architecture, the number of servers you have can really grow quite rapidly. Because uh, for every every farm you set up, you're going to want to have a failover farm for for for. Uh, High availability. You can have your office web apps farm. You can have your um, workflow manager farm. All of that's in the cloud. All of that goes away. Uh, the administration as well. So in terms of patching your environment, you don't have to do that. Microsoft do that for you. That includes you know your, your cumulative updates, your, uh, your KBs, your your service packs. Uh, all of that's going to be taken care of for you. Um, Again, depending on the size of your SharePoint environment that you would look to have on premise, that's obviously going to be much more beneficial. The more the more servers you expect you would have to have on premise, then the amount of admin you're going to lose, you're going to have to, um, you're going to lose by going to SharePoint Online uh, is going to be relative to that. But you know, it's, it's not an, an, an insignificant amount. Potentially, you're going to be able to lower your costs uh, because of that reduced infrastructure and that reduced amount of admin. The reason I put a question mark there is because. There are costs associated with SharePoint uh, Online, which we've not gone into, which uh, which relate around storage. So if you are going to, you obviously have to license everybody as well, but once you pass your allocated amount of storage for the number of licenses you've bought, you are going to have to pay for any additional storage over and above that. Um, and that cost can be comparable to uh, local storage on, uh, on a SAN. It really does depend on your organization and what you're going to do with SharePoint, how much you plan to store, but it is something that needs to be considered. So whilst you will likely save costs in terms of infrastructure, running the infrastructure and, and, and administering the environment, there are some other costs that need to be considered along with that. Uh, there's a 90-day update cycle with SharePoint Online, so you don't have to wait six months, 12 months. You don't have to wait for the next service pack to get updates, uh, sorry, feature updates. They will be re re released in a 90-day cycle. So if you have an on-premise environment to get any big uh, feature improvements or new features, you will normally have to wait for a service pack, which will come probably once a year, once every two years, or the next version of the product. Microsoft will be rolling those into a 90-day update cycle for SharePoint Online. So you will be getting the new features first in SharePoint Online, and they will be following on later to SharePoint on-premise deployments. Um, and uh, an integrated product set is the uh, is the other uh, benefit that people see as well. So, the um, the ability to have again we're kind of looking really more to uh, to uh, the Office 365 environment here, but the ability to have your your Outlook, your SharePoint, your Yammer, um, and your Link seamlessly integrated within a single you know, sort of uh, window or or um, environment. You can kind of do that on premise, but it, it's just there. It just works within the uh, within the Office 365 environment. So these are these are the main some of the main benefits that we're seeing people uh, or pushing people towards a cloud-based solution. <coughs> there are more, and you know we, we can run through uh, run through those with you and discuss your requirements and, and whether there are other benefits uh, that, that exist for you. Uh, obviously, uh, with the, this webinar, but you know we're more than happy to do that. Some of the key considerations and compromises then with a SharePoint online deployment. Uh, the first one, few develop, fewer development options. So, I mean, Visual anyway uh, advocate a uh, configuration and customization approach over and above development. Uh, so, for some people, uh, maybe the majority of people, not being able to write de custom developed solutions on SharePoint might not be an issue. Uh, but for some people and for some requirements, you just can't get away from the fact that SharePoint doesn't do it out of the box and you do have to develop something bespoke. With an on-premise environment, you own the SharePoint servers. You can kind of do what you want as long as it's within the, uh, the supported uh, methods that Microsoft prescribe. With SharePoint Online, you can't get to the servers. You can't deploy things which, which would affect the whole farm because obviously your, your customizations, your, your custom development would then affect other people in the tenancy. So you have to work within what's called the app model, really. So you have to develop apps. It's a different way of working. Uh, it, it may take longer to develop that way because it's you know it's quite new. People have to learn it. Uh, there are certain restrictions around it. Um, so if you are an organization who, who will rely heavily on customization uh, or custom development for SharePoint, that is definitely going to be a consideration as to whether it's the right thing or not. 
In terms of third-party add-ons, uh, again, third parties can't release standard uh, solutions like they used to do for SharePoint uh, for on-premise solutions. They now have to develop them as apps. So if you've bought into a uh, any any organisations that offer third parties and are around project management, around uh, uh, administration, around I don't know process automation. I don't, uh, there are there are so many different uh, add-ons out there, but these may not be. Uh, of, uh, SharePoint Online enabled yet, so again, that may be a limiting factor, and was, it may be a deciding factor as to whether or not you can go to SharePoint Online. Uh, the App Store available in SharePoint um, is getting better. There are more people, more enterprise-level products being added to that, um, but it definitely is, is lagging behind what's available for on-premise solutions. Uh, global latency may not affect a lot of people, uh, but if you are a global organization, when you set up your office, uh, your SharePoint online environment, you have one data center to choose from. Uh, basically, where you set your subscription from, like I said before, is where your data center will go. That could be in Singapore, it could be in, in America, it could be uh, in Amsterdam. But you can't have multiple data, multiple data centers hosting the same SharePoint instance or the same, same SharePoint subscription. What that can mean is if you've got users the other side of the world, they may experience latency issues when they're connecting to uh, a European data center. It depends on what you're doing with SharePoint. If you're doing heavy document management and collaboration, working with very large files, that's going to be much more relevant. If you're just presenting page information, your internet type functionality, that's going to be much less relevant because we can optimize those pages uh, for those sort of connections. But it is a consideration. If you're a global organization, lots of remote users in, in distant parts of the world, then that they may be affected by uh, by that latency. Uh, potential storage costs, I've already talked about that. If you're going to put a lot of information, a lot of content in SharePoint, if you're going to be getting into the tens of terabytes of information, then the storage costs are going to have to be calculated and again could be a consideration. Um, SharePoint online is not full parity yet in terms of functionality with on-premise. <clears throat> so the, you, there are some bits and pieces in SharePoint are online which just don't work the same or just aren't available. Uh, there are a couple of bits around BI. The search functionality in SharePoint online uh, doesn't allow you to look at, do a few things. So one, one example we've come across uh, is the ability to uh, be able to search across non-SharePoint content. Really, with an on-premise SharePoint solution, you can set up search to search you know, business data, external websites, file shares, wherever you want, really. SharePoint on, uh, in the cloud. Um, SharePoint Online, uh, you're limited to just the information that you've got in SharePoint. Uh, there are also, uh, yeah, I mentioned there's the, some BI uh, functionality uh, that, that, that wasn't available as well. Uh, and things that, one of the other things is, uh, is SharePoint user profiles is another thing we've come across. So if, if you want to import information into your SharePoint user profiles from uh, line of business systems and HR system, for example, you commonly do that using what's called business connectivity services. You can't do that in SharePoint Online. You're limited to just having users uh, sync with Active Directory to, pro to populate their user profiles. Might not be a, might not be an issue for many people, but uh, it's one of the uh, one of the things that's missing at the moment. There are limited hybrid options as well at the moment. You can't pick and choose what you want in the cloud and what you want on-premise when it comes to SharePoint and just seamlessly bolt them together. There are there are a set number of, of currently quite limited options for hybrid, so you can have SharePoint uh, online search, SharePoint on-premise content, but only SharePoint on-premise content, not, not, not other content you hold within the organization. You can have SharePoint online uh, connect using BCS to your line of business data and use that in SharePoint. But really, they're the only two hybrid models that exist at the moment. You can't have your, um, oh, sorry, and the other one being the um, the other one being the document storage, personal document storage in SharePoint Online and the rest of the SharePoint content on premise. You can't run your managed metadata in the cloud and use it on premise. You can't share services between the two environments. So it has to be carefully thought about in terms of how you're going to set up your hybrid environment. The same as uh, you know, if you want to put your uh, secure documents on premise and your non-secure documents uh, in the cloud, but manage them as a single entity, you can't really do that. You're running two separate SharePoint environments, and you're limited in, ter in terms of what you can do to span those. And really, and really, in that in that situation, it would just be able to. It would just be the ability to search between them. You wouldn't be able to share metadata, content types, that sort of thing. Uh, and the last thing there is, is data sovereignty. So maybe if you are a global organisation, uh, you uh, have an office in in China, for example, and you have to store any content related to that office within China. 
you can't do that if you've got European data centre, obviously. You can't choose to divert some of it to China, so there are some considerations around that. But the other thing, not really data sovereignty, sovereign, I can't say it now, I'm not going to try and say it, um, is the other thing around that area is um, impact level. So if you're a, um, probably more public sector, but if you've got IL3 data, IL4 data, SharePoint Online is currently only certified to IL2, so you would need to uh, either not use SharePoint for the IL3, IL4, or look for having an on-premise environment for the IL3 and IL4 data, and just put anything IL2 or, or, or below uh, into SharePoint Online. Okay, demo. Uh, the demo, I'm really just going to show you the admin interface and the user interface just to show you the comparison really of SharePoint Online. Uh, I'll assume that you've all worked with SharePoint uh, 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 on-premise to a degree, and, and if you've not, you'll get, you'll get a feel for what, what's available in the uh, online administration. Uh, so I'll just switch over now to my desktop. One second. If anybody could be so as good as just to uh, ping me a message in the uh, in the iron window to let me know when you can see that. Perfect. Okay. So here is my uh, the the demo I'm doing is 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 based on a. SharePoint Online environment that I set up for myself that um, you know I use for for demonstrations and for uh, just you know training, experimentation, etc. So the interface you see in here is not for a full Office 365 subscription. This is what you would get just if you went for for, for SharePoint Online. So this is the uh, the admin center, and from here the, the page you see in here really is just a general. Uh, online uh, management so uh, again it, it would be similar if you had the full office 365 um, but it's not SharePoint specific what we're looking at here this is just managing the cloud stuff so I can set up my users and groups so in here if you've got a small number of users in your organization you could just manually put them in here manually um, add your users in here manage passwords etc from here you can import users so you can have a CSV file and bring them all in so if you've got larger numbers Sock them in here, um, and this is where you set up your, your, your Active Directory synchronization for passwords and so on as well. Uh, in the domains, if you you need to set up here your, uh, I've set up a dummy domain called the Portal People. But for example, if you wanted to use SharePoint uh, Online for your website, then you can uh, associate your domain with the subscription, so you can actually use rather than having to use the the, the dot MicrosoftOnline.com uh, URLs, you can actually use your own. Uh, DNS name like that, like that one there, the portal people code UK, um, and it also allows people to log in uh, via that as well. So it just need, it just tidies up a bit rather than having to use that on Microsoft.com URL. I can manage my licensing, so I can increase licensing. I can buy more licenses for uh, for the subscription I'm on. Um, I can uh, basically just a place I can manage from here, and each do it with your credit card via via this this area here. I can turn on external sharing, so I can say whether people using SharePoint Online from here can or cannot share with people who don't have a license. So the way that um, the way that SharePoint Online manages sharing is that from anywhere within your SharePoint site, you can choose if it's enabled to share a document with another person within any organisation. So I would just put in the email address of, of somebody who I want to share a document with. They then get the invitation. They have to associate their their invite with a with a Microsoft account, so a dot, dot, uh, live dot com or live dot uk account, and they can then log in with that account to access the information. So Microsoft's basically using its its, its legacy Hotmail um, account uh, set up to to authenticate people outside your subscription to allow them in to see content. But you can actually disable it all from here to um, to stop people from being able to do that, or you can enable it. So you can enable it for the whole subscription and then lock it down per site if you want to. So it is granular in the way it can, can be managed. But if you wanted to, carte blanche, just turn everything off from here in terms of external sharing, you could do that, and people can't override that. You have a, uh, a service setting. So from here, <coughs> excuse me, you can, uh, you can just manage some, some general uh, um, passwords, uh, look at software that people have got available, etc. Service Health will let you actually track what's happening with, with SharePoint Online and if you've got Office 365, all the other products as well. And it gives you a day by day, day uh, summary of 
have been had. You could click through to see what information, uh, more information on, on what the issues were, how they were resolved, etc. Uh, and really, it's a, it's a dashboard for viewing any uh, any issue um, or de degradation in service for your, for your online subscription and purchase more services, etc. So this is a bit of just some administration stuff to do with the online subscription. Uh, if I come in here, I've actually got now a SharePoint. This is, this is the equivalent of my own provincial administration. If I come in here to my SharePoint admin console, you'll see uh, any different I want to guess wireless here. It seems to be going quite long. Hopefully it's held up. We'll get into the admin. There we go. So from here, this is where I manage all my SharePoint uh, administration. So just looking down the, down, the, down the side here, I can manage my storage allocation for my, my users personal document storage area. I'll come back to this main part now, uh, sorry, in a minute. But OneDrive for Business, I can go in here and I can say how much people can have for their storage. So I can limit to you know, a very small amount if I don't want people to put a lot up there, or I can increase it uh, right up to a terabyte, you see here, up to 1,024 1, gigabytes. Now, you'll see here, with my subscription, I actually only have 15.23 gigabytes left to play with. I can't just automatically give somebody a, a terabyte for free. So this is where the, you need to think about the additional costs that are going to be incurred by uh, by increasing your storage limits for people. Uh, but yeah, I can come in here and say how much people have got there for, for, for their personal sites. I can do some Im uh, limited administration around InfoPath to say whether people can create browser-based forms, etc. Uh, user profiles. This is actually one of the areas that looks quite similar to the on-premise. Here, I can come in and set up user profiles. I can set up a single with Active Directory. I can create new profile properties, etc. Uh, as mentioned before, one of the things I'm not able to do in here, unfortunately, uh, as yet, is to set up connections to line of business applications to pull in information from HR, etc., to populate my user profile. I've got my business connectivity services. Where I can go in here and uh, set up my connections to external data. Um, in a hybrid model, there'd be quite a lot of work to do in here. And there is a, there is a good TechNet, TechNet article for anybody who's, who's that way inclined and wants to go and look into that more detail. There's a good, a good TechNet article about, about setting up BCS in a hybrid environment. Uh, I won't go into it in here, it's quite technical. But uh, I can either connect to my other online services or I can manage the external uh, data that I want to connect to from here. I've got term store, so if you're using managed metadata in your current SharePoint deployment or you're familiar with the concept, I've got a, a managed metadata service in here which is very similar. So I can set up my central term stores to push out as a, as a centralized taxonomy for people. Uh, records management, so I can set up here uh, my, my record center uh, and have people send in their documents uh, to a centralized record center, much like they do in, uh, in SharePoint on-premise if you've chosen the record center route. I set up my send to destinations uh, and just click and send their records. Search, uh, I've got a lot of options in here. Again, not see with uh, uh, an on-premise solution, but I can go in here and set up things like my query rules, <coughs> excuse me. I can modify my query suggestions, so tell, you know, if somebody types in this, suggest that this instead. I can report so I can analyze the search that's going on and make my uh, configure it and make any configuration changes I need based on that. So there are, you know, there are a fair few uh, modifications, sorry, customization options within online search, uh, but you know, there are a few, I say there's some of the advanced options that you get with an on-premise solution I'm missing from here. So you, so this is one area where you want to think about what you really want to get out of search and do a comparison with, uh, with, with SharePoint Online. Uh, the apps, I'll just jump into the apps here. Uh, so you do have your app store. Again, you have this on premise, um, but you know it's all just there and working with, uh, with SharePoint Online. So I can come into my app, my, the app, oh, sorry. Once my app looks set up, I can come in here and I can buy, uh, buy additional applications which I want to push out to sites. 
So th through here, I can come down and find all the uh, all or any solutions which meet my requirements. I can purchase them, put them in the app catalog, and I can push them out to certain sites to make them available. Um, this takes a fair bit of setup with on-premise uh, solutions. It's all just there and working for you with the SharePoint in the cloud. In terms of the uh, the user interface, um, it's out of time now, but really what I wanted to show you was just you know, kind of similarity. Um, so if you're migrating people from on-premise to the cloud and you're already on 2013, the learning curve, there's not really much of a learning curve for the, for the end users. Uh, sorry, from here I can actually allocate for each of my site collections, specify the storage they can they can have. Um, I can set properties for them. I can say whether or not they can share with external users. Um, just just individual site collection administration really. But if I go into that site. You see, this is my team site in SharePoint Online. It looks very much like a, any on-premise uh, SharePoint Online solution. I've chosen to switch out my SharePoint Social for Yammer, so instead of getting my uh, link here to my news feed, that's actually going to take me to Yammer directly. I've got a link to my personal document storage in the cloud, my OneDrive for Business. It's here, so I can upload my, my, my sort of what would be equivalent to my personal drive content up to SharePoint from here. If I go into the uh, site settings, you'll see again that. If I go into the site settings for here, very similar to on-premise, I have all the same options that I would expect to find for an on-premise team site. Uh, if I go into the, I'm not going to go through all of them; that'll take forever. But uh, if you're familiar with it, you'll see that's uh, that's very, very, very similar. Um, the toolbar is slightly different. You go to document library. I would imagine this will uh, this will be changing with the next. Uh, I'm not even sure if Service Pack 1, I need to check if Service Pack 1 already implements this on-premise, but the, the upload, uh, the creation of documents and the synchronization is slightly different with SharePoint Online, but apart from that, it looks very similar. You can create views, you can modify views, um, working with documents, you can open them in the client, you can open them in the browser, etc. So the actual on So, uh, I mean, if, if anybody uh, who's on the uh, call is interested in, in a, uh, a demonstration, not so much just around SharePoint Online administration, but around SharePoint per se, uh, uh, specifically um, tailored or, or tailored towards the SharePoint 2013 functionality, we're more than happy to come on site, see you about that, um, have a call where, wherever you you'd like to follow up with. Um, but the purpose of that demo really was just to uh, highlight the, the look and feel and the admin options that you've got available in SharePoint Online. Uh, and really that just leaves us with uh, uh, any questions that anybody might have. Uh, feel free to type them in the, uh, in the IM box or uh, Christine can un un unmute your microphone as well if, you, if you'd rather ask them. And we'll give this five minutes just to let people run. I've put my telephone number and my email address on there as well, so if you want to take a note of those, if you've got any questions you'd rather just follow up with, then uh, feel free to email or to call me. That's fine as well. Oops. 